how do we keep kids engaged? That's always a big uh, question on our minds as educators, as math educators. And specifically, if we are using the five practices for orchestrating productive mathematical discussions model, thinking about like, how do I get kids discussing and how do I connect at the end? And, and sometimes there's like lull moments in that process where kids are like, nah, maybe not engaged as they should be. And it's like, how do I keep them engaged during this great, great strategy, this great pedagogical strategy that I'm trying in my classroom. That's what this video is about. Stick with us. Hey there, Math Moments. John here from Make Math Moments. And in this video, we're gonna share with you a common, uh, common question that we get here at Make Math Moments and a common question that pops up in our Make Math Moments Academy. Um, it's so common that we actually uh, featured it in one of our live Q&A monthly calls. Uh, every, week, every month we meet with our Academy members and uh, we talk about what's on their mind and help them and, and give them some resources uh, to go and, and, and work through what they're, they're kind of challenged with. So. In this particular video, we're going to share that video uh, from this question with you, um, which was all about like, how do I keep my students engaged for the entire lesson when I'm using the five practices? So that's that's always something that's on my mind. I, I've had to struggle with that. Um, some, we, we share some of the tips and strategies that we use in our class. So stick with us here. Um, I'm going to not waste any more of your time, but uh, what you're going to see is that live uh, session with our academy and Kylan and I. Uh, talking about that um, in this video. And then stay tuned after, you can see how you can also join the Academy. Per perfect, perfect. Uh, all right, so Claudia, you were, uh, you were asking, this is, this is something that I think everyone probably struggles with at, at some point or the other, that if you are kind of running a five, uh, you know, the five practices for orchestrating productive uh, mathematical discussions and you're, you know, you're having students present or or showcase their solutions and you're kind of I I am envisioning my room we're moving from board to board and we we kind of are letting a student talk but the rest of them have to listen and and not only listen but stand there around the board and listen or if you're doing this at the desks they are, they're doing that at their desks but uh, she says how do you keep your students engaged when some class members are sharing those strategies after working on the task, some of my students do not understand what the presenters are saying and shut down during the connection part. Um, yeah, like I, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely had this, and I think you know, like I, I want to kind of mention two things about this. And uh, the one, the one thing for sure, I think it kind of ties back to what we were saying. Um, that uh, that Jolene was saying that uh, you know, like if you think back to what my lesson would have been like if I didn't. Uh, make changes uh, to be more engaging, to use the five practices. I was doing all the teaching at the front. I was, I was presenting. Um, the kids were listening and writing things down. And we've talked about this in the workshop um, that I, I was doing all the thinking and they weren't doing any of the thinking. And, and so when we move to this new method where we're going to ask kids to think first and engage and we're going to lower that floor and we're going to get them to estimate and and get them into those problems um they're doing a lot more thinking than I, they were doing in the old method that i that i was uh, teaching and when we start the one thing i think about is they yeah they might they might be tuning out at that point you know, they you might be a little bit uh, distracted. Um, sometimes students will do that. All of a sudden, someone's talking, and the other person's kind of giving the other person an elbow, and and they're not uh, they're not really paying attention. That that is going to happen. And and one one way to look at it is is sometimes the way I look at it is that they've got a lot of thinking happening right before that moment. And and so to think like what jo Jolene had said. It's like the old method. They would have probably done no thinking that whole class, and then been just doing some questions but now yeah they might not be doing any thinking at that moment but in that whole 60 minutes uh, or 45 minutes before that you know they were doing some really good thinking so sometimes I I'm I I, I remember that that yeah that, that's gonna happen and how I deal with it is it's a it's a discussion about respect it's a just discussion about uh, paying it you know let's let's engage here or let's let's focus on and give this person their our full attention usually that's what I say when I, I see some grumbling over in the side or they're not listening or they're not paying attention it's just a quick hey 
let's give these people our, our full attention. It could be you next. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, 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 like the one tip that I do. It's, it's not much of a, a, a amazing, amazing thing that we're going to all of a sudden do to make that happen. It's just a quick discussion. And I think the only other thing I would say about it is, is that the, the more you do it, the more they'll be used to that process and therefore they it won't be so like hey we're all standing around and that person's talking and and then uh, we can goof off for a moment when the teacher's not looking but but uh they they uh the more you do it the more it would become routine and then they'll know that that's the expected behavior during that time what do you think kyle uh, what are your some tips on yeah. uh, kids who aren't really listening during connection yeah, I, I think all of those are really good points, like really practicing active listening and, and making sure that, you know, we're, we're reminding students of, you know, what are, what are some of the things that, uh, or one of the, some of the characteristics that active listeners have, right? Like you're, you're looking at the presenter and so on and so forth. But then also if we rewind just a little bit too, to the during stage of when students are actually solving the problem, I think too, if we spend a little time thinking about how we're selecting and sequencing those student solutions, that can also go a long way. So for example, there'll be times when we're going around and uh, John and I typically use whiteboards as, as John mentioned, um, but even if they were working independently at their desk, working on paper, um, we're, we really have moved away from the whole show and tell idea where it's like, everyone's going to have a voice in consolidation because in you know most most of the time one of our biggest challenges is time but then the other one is we only have their attention for so long so as i'm going around the room and trying to select in sequence there might be some students that have a really interesting solution strategy but i'm thinking to myself whether that solution strategy is going to be helpful for other students in the room and if not, I might want to have more of a one-to-one -one conversation with that student or with that group so that maybe I could say, or maybe if I don't understand their solution strategy, I'm, I don't want to put them on, you know, put the spotlight on them and then have them trying to wade through it in front of the whole group because that then I might lose the group as well. So I wonder if maybe, you know, putting some thought into how you select and sequence and really trying to figure out like which strategies am I trying to emerge and then also having that conversation with students so that they understand that just because I'm not sharing your solution or allowing you to share your solution today, it's not because I don't think it's a great solution. It's just that today I noticed that most students were solving it along these, this path. So we're going to focus there today. Uh, but maybe tomorrow we might be looking at more solution strategies like these ones over here. So that might be something to, you know, maybe think about and uh, that may, you know, provide you with maybe a little bit more of that, first of all, narrowing down who's talking and for how long and being more specific about what you want them to share. I used to just say, tell us what you did. And then they take us from the very beginning. And it's like, but the last group already told me what they did from the very beginning in the group before yeah, that. We did that. We did what they did. Yeah, we did what they did. Or you have a group that literally says almost word for word what the last group said, because they're like, this is what I'm supposed to do. So yeah. now I might say, like, why I selected your strategy was because of this part right here. Can you tell me more about like, what, when did you come up with this? Was this like, did you come up with this strategy right mm -hmm. away? Or was this something that you did a little bit later? Um, tell us about that specifically. So it gets a little bit more specific. And that obviously will save some time. But it'll also kind of keep it flowing like if you picture a consolidation like a good story or a good novel or a good uh, movie for example how are we going to get the audience to kind of stay on track throughout this movie if there's too many side stories in the movie then it can be easy for us to just turn off the movie and walk away and I feel like a, a good right. consolidation kind of yeah. keeps it really tight and connected and there's like a very specific thing that we're going to we're going to look for which obviously takes some practice. So I'm wondering Claudia, do you have any thoughts on that uh any any um reflections based on that or maybe we can dive deeper on this for you? All right there, Math Mo Makers, there you have it. Uh, we definitely discussed how to keep kids engaged during the practices, with, uh, during the, that lesson style with five practices. And I hope that you got some some useful tips and in, 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 uh, in lessons to take with you when you were doing this. And maybe not even in the, just the five practices style lesson. You can you can modify or, or modify and, and use these 
techniques and tips uh, in any of your lesson styles. So uh, if you have not yet joined the Academy, because remember we have monthly calls uh, like that, you can subscribe uh, to the Academy or join the Academy. You get your first 30 days for free. Um, and we have a 30 day money back guarantee as well. And uh, that's one of the resources, plus all the tasks and all the teacher guides and all the courses that we have, like our Coursement on Assessment, uh, very popular, probably our most popular course inside the Academy, which is called Assessment for Growth, uh, which talks about how to assess students. That's always our, our big question. We've got a full course in there for you to give uh, to give a go and, and learn uh, along with us. So uh, check those things out and uh, we will see you soon and have a great rest of your week and uh, check you out next week.